Yo, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. I am here today to review the book First Writer's Call by Kristen Britton. This book is book number two in her Green Rider series. I think that's what the um, uh, series is called. Yeah, Green Rider. So here we've got the whole series here. Actually, there's seven books in the series. I've got six. I've got the six mass market paperbacks. The latest book just came out in hardcover. I don't have that yet. Um, but let's talk about the covers first. This came out in 2003. So this series has been around for a bit. Uh, I think Kristen takes uh, two or three years, maybe four years between each book. And we'll get into why she does that, why she's not like a yearly, a yearly published author. Kind of like me, I take about three years between my books. And there's a reason. It's because I got a day job as a, I work at the Utah State Prison take, uh, teaching uh, life skills to the inmates. Uh, you know, a lot of us authors, we have other jobs we do. So, you know, we just, we don't write as fast as we could. That's what I'm getting at. Kristen Britton's also in that same boat. Anyway, um, uh, the cover. This cover was a great cover done by the late, great fantasy painter Keith Parkinson, who did a lot of stuff for Dungeons & Dragons back in the day, and that is a dynamite cover. It just wraps around beautifully. You know, the first cover was also done by Keith Parkinson, the green rider through the aspen trees and the forest. It's just super cool. Well, uh... You know, unfortunately, Keith Parkinson um, passed on, so the mantle was handed over to the great Donato Giancola, and he has done pretty much the other books in the series, which just have also fantastic covers. And I will just hold them... Oh, for Christ's sake! I will just hold them all up here for you. And then if we put all of the books together in the series, we can see that they all have great matching spines and the whole series goes together just really nicely. It all looks really nice on yourself. So thank you to Da Books for just putting together at least the paperbacks all look just killer in your collection if you've got them. So thumbs up on that. Let's get to the book. Now you can tell that Kristen Britton works and has her day job as a park ranger. And you can tell that she has an obvious love for the wilderness just by reading the lush, lush descriptions of the forests that are sprinkled abundantly throughout these books. Um, you can just tell that in her world building, she is crafting just a beautiful, beautiful world full of plants and forests and fauna and wildernesses for her characters to adventure through, for her castles to be set in. It's just an absolutely gorgeous job of world building, beautiful job of world building, all focused around nature and our author's love of nature. And that alone is worth the price of admittance into this series. You just got to read the books just for that alone, and you're going to get a grand reading experience, if you like that type of uh, prose. Yeah, it is a very... She does write in a very descriptive, prose-heavy style, as do I. A lot of people like that. If you're into that, fantastic. These books, unlike mine... Mine are a bit rated R. Well, mine are a lot rated R. These are probably in the PG to PG-13 rating, just so you know. Um, so they're safe for kids. They're safe for all ages. Um, and just going back to her prose, the history, the mythology and history that she has put into these books just after, and I've only read the first two. I haven't even got into the rest. But just with the first two, you can just tell. She is layering in some, just some dynamite, dynamite stuff world building wise. Um, 
And that starts with the Green Riders. Let's just talk about it. Kerrigan, the main character, is the Green Rider. And she becomes a Green Rider in book one. That is why book one is called the Green Rider. And the Green Riders are just kind of like couriers, you know. Game of Thrones, they had couriers. A lot of times they would send ravens with a little note attached to their foot. And sometimes in Game of Thrones they would send an actual dude on horseback to deliver the message. Sort of like the Pony Express in the Old West. That's kind of what these uh, Green Riders do. They are just sort of a the end-all, be-all of if you need to get shit done in this universe, the Green Riders are who you call. And our main character, Kerrigan, is one of them. Or she was one of them. She actually kind of went home. And this book starts with her sort of just chilling at home, but wishing she was back out in the adventure. And uh, that's kind of where this starts. This book has a very, very complex plot that I did not want to try and replicate in my notes because I knew I would get up so and probably spoil stuff. So I am just going to read the back jacket copy here before I give my final rating and then and you can get a sense of what's happening. So ghostly writers ghostly writers i mean you can see this cover depicts our main character and a guy on a horseback that's probably a ghost um and ghosts play ghosts and spirits play a big part in this trilogy trilogy i don't know what i'm talking about this whole fucking series um kerrigan had been a green rider had been a green rider one of the one of the King of Sicordia's elite magical messengers. Being a Green Rider was more perilous than Kerrigan had ever imagined. For Rogue Elysian had cracked the magical Deer Wall, which had protected Sicordia. I'm not pronouncing Sicordia right at all. Sacoridia. Sacoridia. The Dyer Wall had protected Sacoridia for a thousand years from the evil influence of the Black Veil Forest. The aboreal prison of Sacoridia's ancient enemy, Mornhaven the Black, and had brought the threat of dark magic back into the land. So that's kind of things that happened previous. Now that might have been spoilery, though, for Book One. Sorry about that. My bad. In the messenger service, she had been caught up in a world of deadly danger, and though she had defeated the Elysian, she had nonetheless been trained by been tainted by the wild magic exhausted in both body and spirit and determined to be mistress of her own destiny kerrigan had returned to her home in corsa but kerrigan's determination was now no match for the writer's call ghostly hoofbeats echoed in the deep regions of her mind and when she awoke to find herself on horseback halfway to sacor city in her nightgown she finally gave in it's got a bit of a black i will say it's got a bit of a born legacy feel to it you know when when you've got the uh, or born identity when you kind of wake up and you don't know where you're at she she kind of goes through a thing like that too back at court kerrigan found the green riders weakened and diminished rider magic was becoming unreliable and she was herself having ghostly visions visions of a strong woman with wild flowing hair and a blue and green tartan draped across her shoulder pinned with a golden brooch this woman was no stranger to kerrigan or would she have been to any green rider for she was lil and brody I think that's how you say it. Ambroidy. Lil Ambroidy. First writer and founder of the Green Rider Corps. But why was she appearing only to Kerrigan? And why would Kerrigan be able to seek the help of a woman who had been dead for a thousand years? So that's why the, it is called the First Writer's Call. Because the first writer, the, the person that started the Green Rider's magical corpse has come back in ghostly form to haunt our main character and tell her that there are things that she must do and that's basically the plot there's a lot more involved than that but anyway green rider book one go watch my review of that then i just finished this one both two great books that i've read recently can't wait to get to the rest of the series and we shall see where it goes um, from here. I'm excited. Like I said, great writing, great world building, great mythology, great history, great lush, wonderful descriptions of the landscape that are 
writers that our green writers travel through. It's just dynamite. I'm giving this a solid 9 out of 10. I really enjoyed it, and I think you all will too.